It's a very exciting day and or night here on the Equity Guru Investor Roundtable, and I'll tell you why in a second. We're going to be talking about GMTN, that is Gold Mountain. I mean, why would you not want to work for a company or invest in a company that's called Gold Mountain? I mean, it just makes sense. It's on the Venture Exchange, Toronto. They're based in Vancouver, and Kevin Smith is their CEO. This is why things are so exciting on this edition, is Vishal Vitura, the chart attack guru, is going to launch first. <laughs> So you get to launch, push the buttons, and then come all the way back around to the charts later. Wow. So, no pressure. No pressure. Don't screw this up. No, I won't, <laughs> I won't screw this up. But uh, Gold Mountain, and um, I'm hoping the viewers can see the image here. You can see the property, the Elk Gold project here, which is a past producing mine. But the big news that came out today is Gold Mountain has received uh, and they're, they're you know, obviously pleased to announce that the Ministry of Energy, Mines, and Low Carbon Innovations Communications Office has awarded the company its mining permit here in British Columbia. And Gold Mountain is ready, or while well, they're anticipating that they're going to be achieving commercial production in November. So we're already in November. So these guys can already be delivering some ore beginning this month which again means cash flows and revenues. And here they're, they're talking about in their uh, uh, news release here, year one of production of high grade mineralization will be bringing in an expected annual after-tax profit of $10 million. And we talk about you know junior mines. Uh, well, I guess this is now uh, a mid-tier because they're going to be developing, uh, but we talk about management, we talk about jurisdiction um, and we talk about, you know I guess jurisdiction and location are, are quite similar. Um, again, BC, um, I was just saying these to, this to the guys off fair, but I was actually quite surprised uh, that they got uh, a permit here. Um, I just, you know, BC is very strict, right, on environmental permits. And, um, of course, the uh, uh, First Nations have to be involved and all that kind of stuff, uh, as, as are in other parts of Canada. Um, but with BC, um, I haven't really, I can't really think from the top of my head, the last time a mine permit was issued here. Um, so I think this is big news. Uh, this is huge. Um, took me by surprise. And um, location wise, I mean, you can see here from the image as well, they are on a highway very close to the airport in Kelowna and also very close to Merritt. So they have the infrastructure uh, ready to go and um, operations are about to start this month. Uh, so I got to congratulate the management team over at Gold Mountain. It's uh, very good news. Not bad, Michelle. You almost crumpled under the pressure there, but you did a nice <laughs> job of delivering, <laughs> delivering the good news. And I also like the $10 million. Chris Perry, that's $10 million more million than I have. What are you going to say? Yeah, well, that's a, it's a probably, you know, what uh, what we owe in taxes. Um, uh, Gold Mountain. Is a, a, as we would call it in Australia, a specky. It's a special. Oh, it's one of these companies that, from the outset, has said we're going to do this thing that other other companies don't do. And half people went, "That sounds like a good idea. I'm into that." And the other half were like, "No, nah, you're never going to make that happen. You're going to get a mining permit in BC. Yeah. In BC, yeah, never happen." And lo and behold, the the angels started uh, cheering. And the clouds opened, and thus a, a mining permit was bestowed on Gold Mountain. Uh, this is craziness. Um, it, these guys, they have a plan to go mine quickly. In, in a nutshell, that's their deal. Is they're not going to go out and like screw around drilling, raising money, drilling, raising money, trying to blow out a really humongous uh, uh, 43101. What they're trying to do is basically say, we know that there's gold. In them, there are hills. We've got a pretty good idea based on what people have done before us that there's some right here. We're going to go in and get it, and then we're going to sell it, and then we're going to finance further exploration and drilling, and we'll be able to see in the ground where that gold goes to and follow it to its natural conclusion, which is a great idea. It's, it's something that uh, uh, other companies have done on, on a small scale in the past and had some success with. Uh, I don't know why it's not the way to go other than the fact that Mining company CEOs usually deal guys that have their eyes transfixed on 
10 years down the line being the place where people start finally asking them why they haven't produced gold yet. And in the meantime, raise money and play golf and go to Brandy's and snort cocaine off a of hooker's crack. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Smith is gone the other way. He's, I, I can't tell you whether he's doing anything at Brandy's, but he's certainly doing things <laughs> on the side of a mountain. Is Brandy um, still open? <laughs> it's still open. <laughs> <laughs> And has a lineup out front, though. Let's <laughs> yeah. not talk about that. Um, look, man, yeah, you're, you're new to town, Rob. Brandy's experience <laughs> is one that you'll eventually be dragged into kicking and screaming. <laughs> um, look, Gold Mountain's just the shit. I, 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 I've been telling people about this company for a long time. Greg's been telling people about this company for a long time. You know, Vishal's been telling people about it for a long time. I, I, everyone's been saying the same thing. And the share chart sort of shows that it's not an unpopular theory. The gold mountain is doing what you would hope that any gold explorer would do. They're not just tossing money into the wind and hoping. They're using as much data as they can to make educated decisions. And that's reflected in the share price. Now, it went bonkers uh, about six months ago, up to 330. A lot of people made a lot of money and a lot of people cashed out because, hey, if you've bought in at 90 cents, why wouldn't you cash out at three bucks? honest to God, even if you love the company, come on, be rich for a moment, see what it feels like. So we sold a bunch of Gold Mountain and then it got down to a buck 35 again and we started buying back. Uh, now this thing is just like every month is better than the next. It just goes up, it just goes up, it just goes up. It's doing the same thing that uh, Hell, uh, Great Bear did uh, before it. Uh, it's done the same thing that Brigadier Gold did for a second and a half. Um, it, it's just a smart bunch of people doing smart things and setting the new example, quite frankly, of how you actually show that you're looking to build a company and not a deal. Mm. Uh, I love Gold Mountain and uh, I would like to take it out on dates. <laughs> wow. And <laughs> I'll say this as well. There's Brandy? never, there's never been more shares traded in a single day than there was yesterday. Yep. <laughs> yep. I like that. All right. TK, go deep. So I, I'm basically going to echo what everyone that's has said. A, that's a it's, mining. That's a mining pun. Go no deep. It's a Brandy's <laughs> pun too. <It's> a brand- <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm punned out at this point. <laughs> <laughs> <He feels nice>. but, <laughs> there's there's a few things that kind of lead to success in the mining or exploration, um, and they're always pointed out by management. It's the know-how or experience by the management team or the geologist having financial resources, so an ability to raise cash and or generate cash and cost control with those deposits. But the key is actually generating positive value from the projects that you do have. Luckily, we have some of the numbers here for Gold Mountain. And they say on average, their base case is that if gold is at 1,600, they're before tra- they're before tax, before tax, before tax, uh, positive value is 300 million from their project, which is a 5% return for them. And that's right now gold is at 1,700. Um, in, in the last 10 years, the high has been 2,000 and the low has been 1,000. If you look at their sensitivity from 2,000 to 1,000, they make money on each gold price. Obviously it goes lower as the gold price uh, goes lower, but they're, part, they're cash flow positive on each one with their projects. And the milestone that they have now is that they've got the permits and now they're planning on going into uh, actually delivering their first ore of new gold and then achieving commercial production. So management is not only getting permits, it's also meeting its strategic objectives. It has positive NPV projects. Um, I think you could read more about there on their website. And it also has great after-tax returns. And tax is the killer for a lot of the uh, uh, miners. So it's, it's a perfect combination for them to, uh, to, to, to go forward, not including a $14 million cash pile that they have. So it's, it's pretty perfect for them right now. I, I just want to quickly build on that. Um, just looking at Greg's article, uh, he's mentioned, you know, the CapEx is very tiny for the mine, but if you build or if they build a mill on site, which they're going to do, it's going to drive down the all-in sustaining costs. So the cost, you know, the cost to mine the gold, 
um, it's going to be $735 an ounce down to $554 an ounce. And with, with the gold price at, you know, 1700 or if it remains above even 1200 right, going forward, I'm just saying that's like a worst case scenario of gold, gold falls, um, you know, even at 1200 um, you're still making cash, right? But I mean, you know, I'm not yeah. that bearish on gold, so don't worry. I think you're going to be <laughs> seeing high prices here on gold, but in all sustaining costs down to 554 an ounce, that's uh, uh, that's something. Who's spending my money? 7,500 bucks each. Let's go. It's Anybody? a tough one. I, I think uh, personally, this one has been priced in. It's, it's rare to get such a good company at an attractive price. Uh, but I, th I think I would put $1,000 and wait for hopefully another crash if the Fed uh, says <laughs> Don't something. Don't say that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm pretty heavy, highly leveraged here on gold. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the Fed says anything that's not transitory, I hope, um, I like gold. I hope to uh, pick I up. just want to highlight here that... <laughs> I, I just want to highlight, Rob, uh, remember we talked about this when we were tr uh, trending at a buck 40. So we've had a quite a nice uh, bounce from that zone to where we are now at just around $2. And as Chris mentioned earlier, uh, the most shares traded at 1.3 million shares traded today when the average volume is 208,553 shares uh, traded. So I like the fact that, you know, they're, they're beginning to, to mine and they can be mining uh, quite quickly. I'm bullish on gold. Uh, I like the chart on gold. I can just quickly show you guys that as well, of, uh, where we are, a breakout of a flag pattern here. And again, we're just recording this before the Fed. So that's why we have uh, a bit of indecision here on the chart. But uh, I like GMT and I'm going to, I think I would be uh, adding this to my uh, large gold position. But I, I would be, again, just because I have a pretty big um, allocation in, in miners and royalties and other producing um um, mid-tier companies, I think I would go up to 2K in GMTN. And that's just because I have uh, a pretty big exposure to other gold and silver and other mining projects. If I had an ounce of gold for every time you said you were bullish on gold, whew, <laughs> we'd all be retired. You should be retired by now. You spent all that money on gold. We need gold to go up first. <laughs> I mean, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> that's true. All right, Chris, we got a grand and two grand. What are you thinking? All in. Really? I think this is a good price. And like, you can't understate the history yeah. of BC granting a mining permit, like an NDP government yeah. granting a mining permit. Yeah. This, is, this is unprecedented. I think it's a um, watershed, watershed moment here. There's literally like people who are like, no, I'm not going to go near BC mines because they don't exist anymore. There's no new mines coming up. Well, this is just broken through. Uh, it can happen, guys. I was there. Yep. You know, it's like it's a big moment. Um, and and look, this, the stock jumped from a buck ninety five to two twenty five on the day. Clearly, there were some people waiting for that news and sold into it. But I think the trajectory of this thing goes up from here. It's very, very, very de risked. Yep. And you know, I, I don't think that putting your your stack into it at this point. Is a is a very risky thing. I think you're investing in a good company that's shown itself. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I, I just want to quickly add. I mean, just to what Chris said about BC, I think it's it's really important to mention that. Um, you know, I've been following gold for quite some time, and I've never owned a BC Junior, uh, just because I've never thought we would get a permit here in BC. I've always looked in Ontario or Quebec or you know, in parts of uh, the Mar Maritime provinces or even in the in the Yukon, uh, but I've never held. A BC stock because I've always thought that hey you know a permit here with the NDP government very you know environmentally friendly stuff never going to happen right or it's if it does it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of uh, bureaucracy involved so uh, this is actually quite a, a important moment here and uh, now I might be looking at BC projects to add to my portfolio. Getting through the government is one thing but getting through First Nations is another right yeah. like it, it takes real skill on the executive side to be able to navigate all of those potential uh, problems and do so in a way that makes everyone say, yep, yeah, you're good. All right, we're okay with you running a, a gold deal. I've actually, I'll also say that this company more than any other explorer we've ever encountered has been the one that has been most at us to come see it, right? Most mining companies are like, oh yeah, we'll do a side visit one day, but they don't really want you coming out because it's a, 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 a four peg a tent from Canadian tire and uh, a rack of, of drill cores 
and maybe a water cooler and a, a generator that keeps cutting out. Like most of these mines are not mines, right? They're 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 caravans. Uh, Gold Mountain has been at us like attack dogs. Come see what we've actually built here, and so it's probably time we did it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be talking to Kevin Smith about that very thing very shortly. Yep. Kevin Smith is the CEO. You talked about leadership management, getting it done. It's Gold Mountain GMTN on the Toronto Venture Exchange. They are Vancouver-based. What we tell you is not guaranteed. Please do your own research. We cannot guarantee future results from past performance, although Chris is very confident. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you. This is Gold Mountain. We'll see you on the next Equity Guru Investor Roundtable.